Good morning and welcome to today's live session from the Virtual Village Hall. It's really lovely to see you here today. I'm Rachel from I Printed That and I'm going to be taking you through three print techniques and then I'm going to be showing you three different ways that you can then go on to do them at home using maybe items that you've already got or things that are you were able to buy really, really cheaply and easily. So if you are online today, it would be lovely to hear from you. Please say hi, let me know where you are in the country, where you are in the world, if the weather is as bad as it is here today. Um, and also, if you want to make any comments, any ask any questions, then I will try my best to answer them all. If I miss any, I will make sure that I go through all the comments at the end to make sure that um, each and every one gets answered. So without further ado, I'm going to show you lino cut printing. It's a relief type printing technique and I'm, then I'm going to show you how you can use a takeaway box, one of those polystyrene ones that you get from your burgers in or the fish and chips. Um, you can also use a pizza plate, the base of a pizza plate you get from the supermarkets or even a polystyrene plate that you get at the parties. So first of all, I'll show you the textbook way to do lino cutting to do relief print making and then I'm going to show you that tweak so I'm just going to pop you down and I can show you so you can see exactly what I'm doing I'm using this sketch today they're beautiful seed heads from poppies there's lovely ones around at the moment and that's the one that I'm going to be using for you so I've already traced my design there. So this is just greaseproof paper, there's nothing special about it, you can use proper tracing paper, you can also use carbon paper, but greaseproof paper, the stuff that you use um, when you're baking works just fine. So just using um, a normal HB pencil, I've traced my design. Then I need to transfer that design to a piece of lino. So this is a lino tile. It's called a soft cut lino. It's very, very easy to use, especially if you're a beginner. It's a really good one for beginners, actually, because it is so soft. You can see it's very pliable. The, the kind of the real proper lino is it's got that lovely linseed putty smell to it. It's hessian backed. Um, it's quite hard and it gives you a slightly different tech, uh, print from it, more of a kind of a raw basic you know down to sort of your woodcut print that's sort of the, the print that you get from the proper lino but this lino is just so easy to use so that's the one I'm going to demonstrate with you today and it's called soft cut lino so I take the tracing that I've done I just flip it over and then again using that HB pencil I'm going to transfer the image just by going over the back. So remember I flipped the tracing paper over so the pencil side that I did that I traced is facing down and I'm just going over the back with the pencil again. It's very important with this type of printing that you get a negative or a reverse image because when you print it, it will be the right way round, but the image here will be the wrong way round. This is especially important if you are using text, because you don't want every, everything you write to be have to be read backwards. So that's that. I'm happy that that's all transferred onto there. I then take a Sharpie pen, and I'm just going to... go over all those bits just so that I don't smudge it when I come to cutting it So I've stylized this sketch just slightly so that it relates well 
to the printmaking demonstration that I'm going to do for you today. And I'll use the same image when I show you how to do it differently so that you can see the two techniques and how they stand up against each other. So I've roughly gone over that and now I need to start cutting it out. So I'm going to flip it around this way. So I've got it. And these are the lino cut tools that I use. So it's a nice wooden handle, it's sort of an ergometric design. And then you've got different blades. They start at number one, which is the smallest, and then they go up to number five, which is the biggest. I start always start with a number one because that gives you a really good accurate cut to your prints and I always start by going all the way around the edges cutting out any details and then I'll use a larger one to take out the larger parts so as I'm cutting I'm cutting this side of the line because what I want to do is make sure I'm going to stand up for this <laughs> make sure that I get the full um, area of the print because if you start shaving off these bits your print can become sort of start to look a little bit scraggly and remember with line and cut you can always cut away more but you can never add you can never put it back So I'm taking out about a quarter's depth of the lino. You want it deep but not too deep. If you do go through it's not a major problem. And also as you can see as I'm cutting I'm holding my, my fingers are either at the side or below the blade. Don't cut like that because you will end up um, cutting yourself. You can also get slip mats or non-slip mats so that the liner doesn't slip around and you can also buy lino holders as well that hold the corner. But I quite like the freedom of being able to just turn the lino really really easily and you'll see that as I'm doing it I'm moving the lino rather than moving myself. As I come to a point there, I'm just going to go in and then come up just before the edge and then I can take that off. Make sure my fingers are out of the way. So moving the liner all the time and just letting the blade do the work. I'm just doing this very quickly so it's not quite as accurate as I would normally like it to be. And then in my design, these bits are white, so these are the bits that I want to carve away. And then the bits that I want to take the colour, I need to leave. Lino cut is called what's called a relief printmaking process. So the relief, or the bits that stand proud, are the bits that take the ink and then print your image. So just as long as you remember that, the bits that you don't need you carve and the bits that you want to keep, the bits that you need, are the bits that you don't touch. You can also get lino that's got a different surface area to the innards 
and that's quite a nice way that can sort of give you a you don't have to think too much about that way so I'm still just using number one I've left that little bit there because I'm going to go in that with a number two blade and I don't hold my tool like a pencil I hold it quite low Oop, came off the side there so this bit here is all white as well I'm just moving it like this to get a sort of a rougher edge coincide with the natural shape of the seed head. Yeah, this is definitely very rough. <laughs> I would take more time over these normally. But it's just going to give you an idea of sort of how to use a lino if if you wanted to if you've either got a kit at home that you've never used or if you wanted to have a go yourself and it's quite inexpensive um, sort of the proper kit to set yourself up You just need um, tools, you can just buy very basic tools, the ba most basic tools work really well. You need a piece of lino, <laughs> some block ink, and make sure it is block ink. Um, acrylic doesn't work with this sort of printing. So it's block ink, and I'm just going to... And you also need a roller which I'll show you in a minute. So I'm just going to take this little bit out here. So these bits are like where the light is hitting the, the stem. So I'm just doing this bit very gently. So I'm just scratching the surface here because I want to add texture. Just as a suggestion of the light hitting it. I'm going to use a number two blade now so I'm just going to release a number one blade and then put in number two so this takes out larger pieces of lino and I've done all the, the detail work other little bits so when I'm taking larger bits out from the side I tend to work from the image outwards so that you don't end up cutting through because it's quite easy to do
if you do any printmaking or if you've done any in the past then it would be really lovely to see any photos um, if you can post those in the comments it's always lovely to see other people's work because I think you'll get you get so inspired by it and you can learn so much just from other people's work from the, the techniques they use from the subjects that they use it's a great way of learning I always learn I run workshops uh, printmaking workshops and I always find that I learn so much from the attendees and also from other print artists. So normally I would cut away all of this, but just for the purposes of today. I just cut a little bit out. And it's, it's a real personal preference um, on the background. Some people like to have a very clear background and make sure that no lino is left. But I really enjoy the texture that you get when um, bits are left in. And you'll see what I mean when we actually come to print it. Okay, so that's the lino cut quite roughly but it's cut I might just very quickly take the number two blade out going with number one and I'm just gonna scratch the surface here almost sort of cross hatch it so you get a little bit of the texture Just, whoops. That's the take of polystyrene takeaway box just falling on the floor. <laughs> I'll grab that in a second. Good. So that's that done. So I'm just going to clear away all of these bits of liner that I took out. And now it's time to print. You find with most printmaking techniques that it's always the, the preparation that takes the time and the actual printing takes hardly any time at all. So here I've got a piece of um, a Perspex or acrylic. You can buy, buy them sort of ready for lino cut or you can also just use um, piece of acrylic that you can buy from a, um, from a DIY store. You can also use acrylic or that you find in clip frames or photo frames. You can use glass but just be aware that glass can be quite dangerous with the sh sharp edges and breakages. So I would definitely suggest plastic rather than glass but that's fine. You can also use a tray as well, a really really flat tray. So you just use, apply a small amount of ink I often have discussions in my workshop to what size this is and um, I think the latest one is um, it's a slow as in the fruit that you get um, from the whole fruit, black film. So I'm just going to roll of the ink and I'm doing it backwards and forwards, left and right. And the idea of this is to coat the roller with a totally solid um, coating of ink. So I'm just going to roll with that and you'll see the texture change. It starts off very rippled and it goes quite solid. You'll also hear the sound change. I don't know if you can hear that but the sound changes. It goes like really sticky. And then we can make our print. So the roll with the roller nicely um, loaded with the ink and then roll it over make sure I've got all those little bits and as soon as you put the ink on you really see the print come to life and you can imagine really what it's going to look like on the paper and then you can take a piece of paper 
that on top. So this is just really a test print, so I'm just using scrap paper. Oh, I think I might have moved it. And then, yeah, I moved that one. It needs a bit more ink. So then that's how you make your print. All the bits that were standing up took the ink and the bits that were carved are left the white of the paper. So it's not the best, not the cleanest print that I've ever done, but I hope that um, helps you understand the relief printmaking process using Lino. So now I'm going to show you how to do it differently so you can tweak it and do something very similar at home. So we're going to use the same design again. I'm going to pick up that takeaway box that fell on the floor. Hello again. So, as I said, you just need to use um, a polystyrene takeaway box, just like ones that you get um, your kebab in, um, burgers in, fish and chips in. Yeah, this isn't really a healthy eating uh, session today, but in fairness to me, I did actually go and ask for one of these. Um, I do find that the takeaway people, they're, they're really, really helpful, um, and they do, they will let you have bit, little things like this if you ask very, very nicely. So that's, that's what we're using. Make sure it's washed out if you've used it before. And I've just taken, just cut the top off. So you want the nice flat bit, not the bits that are on the side that are moulded. And it really is a very similar process to the way we've just done the lino. So you trace your design. So there's the one that I traced. Again, the pencil marks, you flip those over onto your polystyrene and, and I think you can just see that so I'll just start rubbing with the pencil just all over the back so that you transfer the pencil marks to the polystyrene and it's just an HB pencil this is just greaseproof paper that you can that you use for cooking, so a couple of things that you've probably already got at home. And this one's much quicker to do as well than the carving out. So I think I've gone over all the lines. Yep, you can just see that there. Um, I go over with a Sharpie again because it makes it easier to see this time before it was so that I didn't smudge it but this time it makes it easier to see so that's the top of the seed head done that's the collar beautiful curves there are so many beautiful seed heads around at the moment they're a real inspiration and then if I can just see got those ridges on the bulbous part of the seed head So that's it copied over. So again, like with the lino, you need to make sure it's a reverse image. And again, especially important if you're doing text. So it's a reverse image that you um, transfer onto the piece of polystyrene. So once again, I'm just gonna pop you down so you can see what exactly what I'm doing. So the same as a lino, it's a relief printmaking process. So the relief is the bit that stands proud 
and that's the bit that's going to take your ink. So I'm going to start like I did again with the lino, just going round the outside and rather than drawing, because you can sort of start ripping into the actual image, I'm just stabbing with my pencil. and then I'll join them up. I'm going to be cutting this out in a bit, which might seem a bit counterproductive that I'm going around the edge, but if you're cutting it, then you get some really sharp edges. And I think it's nice to go along with the natural theme and get some natural sort of edges rather than really, really sharp ones. back the other way so that's all the outside bits done so now I need to remember where I want the ink to go they're the bits that I need to leave and the bits where I don't want them to be, they're the bits that I need to take out. So these bits need to come out. And you can see it's so much quicker than doing it, doing it with the lino, with the cutter and the lino. This is a great one for children as well, children, grandchildren, great grandchildren, because there's a you know, it's almost impossible to, to cut yourself with the pencil. So I'm going to make this bit white as well. So remember, I don't want this bit printed, so I'm taking it out. But I've left the lines here so that you end up with a line that takes the ink. So it slightly differently and I'm going to take these bits out as well so that I get a contrast between the collar and the top of the seed head. And then I've just got that shadow there so I'll take that out and then here as well. Then I might just rough these up a bit. So you get an idea of a sketch. Okay, so that's all done. As you can see, a lot quicker than doing the lino. And now just take a pair of scissors. And I'm going to use those marks that I made first off. Came up by itself. Not a bad thing. That's it. Okay, so there we have a stamp, and then we can print it. Make those bits up a bit. So I'll move my bits of polystyrene out of the way. I've got quite a lot to tidy up when I've done here. And the, the ink and pads that I use are just these normal stamp ones. Um, I get these ones from Hobbycraft. They're, sometimes they're on offer for a pound, sometimes they're a couple of pounds. They come in lots of different colours. And they work just fine on the lino, on the, on the polystyrene stamps. So you're just going to make sure the back, or sorry, the front of the, your stamp is completely coated.
take a piece of paper and then with this I place the stamp down and then just all over the back with your fingers make your print and there you are so that's lino cut or relief printing done two ways that's with the lino cut and then that's with the the, the polystyrene takeaway box So I hope you've I hope you've learnt a few things there. I hope that's given you some ideas, something you can maybe do this weekend because I think the weather's not going to be too great all weekend. So that was relief printing. I would now like you to forget everything you've just learnt and I'm going to show you screen printing, which is a form of resist printing. So bear with me two seconds while I just clear this away and I'll get all my screen printing stuff together. I'm afraid I'm a very messy worker, although I like to say it's just because I'm creative. So with um, screen printing, it's a form of resist printing technique. And resist means that you need to resist or stop the ink from getting through onto what you're printing. We use the screen to print. We also use a squeegee. And the resist is a stencil. So this can be made in lots of different ways, but the way I'm going to show you today is with um, a paper cut stencil. So again, I've been at the takeaway and I've got some plain newsprint from the fish and chip shop. Now you can use newspaper. The, all this is is newspaper that hasn't been printed. It's just the off cuts. You can either ask very nicely from the fish and chip shop or you can also buy it online um, or as I say just use newspaper. Don't be tempted to use cartridge paper simply because um, it absorbs all the water in the paint that you're using and you'll either get a bleed in your print or it can really really quickly uh, break down so you don't get to make many prints from it. So I'm working on our um, poppy seed head design again. I don't need my squeegee and my screen for the moment. I'm going to pop those there. But what I do need is a craft knife, um, a craft cutting board, and I need to start making my stencil. So I'm just going to pop you down again so you can see what I'm doing. So using a craft knife, uh, just a couple of tips, um, just as a refresher if you've never used one before, make sure you've got the safety catch on. Don't hold it like a pencil because that will uh, rip your paper. You need to hold it fairly low and you're cutting with the first kind of couple of millimetres or eighth, sorry, couple of millimetres or eighth of um, an inch. Don't cut with the top of the blade, it's though it's just the cup of the first part of the blade. And again, so a little actually I said to forget everything you've learned, but with the lino, remember that we move the lino rather than moving ourselves, where it's the same here. So we're moving the paper, keeping our hands away from the blade. And cutting out the silhouette. So I always start by cutting the whole silhouette out first and then I can go and cut out the detail. So I'm moving the paper rather than yourself. I 
normally when I do the workshops and I always ask has anyone ever done screen printing before often lots of people either say at school or even at work so it would be lovely to hear from you if you if you ever had to do it at school or if you if in your work you did screen printing um, and if it's something that you do now it'd be lovely to see some photos as I said it's it's always nice you can always learn so much from other people's work so please you can post your photos in the comments section I'd love to see them so you'll see that these are two very different techniques the relief print and this the resist printing technique and I'm nearly all the way around so you don't have to use a craft knife you can use scissors if you don't have a craft knife and this is exactly the same stencil and exactly in, done in exactly the same way that I'm going to show you when I tweak it slightly and we do a bit differently so after I've done this kind of proper textbook one I'm going to show you how to use an embroidery hoop, um, an old neck curtain and an old credit card or store card to screen print with. So this bit we have to keep because remember where the paper is, that's our resist, we don't want the ink to go and where the holes are in the paper or where the stencil is that's where we want the ink to go so we save this bit and now I'm just going to work on the poppy seed head taking out all these details so that we can lay them back on and make our print so for that I've got a nice small pair of scissors I just use sort of my embroidery scissors and I can cut through this bit because remember we don't need it these are the bits we need because I want these to show up in the white of the fabric that I'm going to print onto and I want the rest of it, the bits that are around it, to be in the colour. So I can be quite cavalier and cut, cut the top off. So the, I'm just going to chuck away the bits that I don't need. So that's one of the bits I need. You can get really quite fiddly with these, depending on your cutting skills. But just for today, I'm going to show you um, sort of a fairly bold print. It's nice to experiment with some real stylized images and then go in a lot de more detailed. That I don't need. A couple more bits here. And then I need this top part as well. Just cutting the colour off. And I want to cut. I'm going to have this bit as white, so I want to leave that and then this bit I'm going to have as white and then this bit I'm going to have as black. No, nope, wrong way round. I'm going to have this bit as white, this bit as black and this bit as white. So that again we get the contrast. That's it, yeah. It's always good to plan before you start cutting. And sometimes it can take a while to get your head round which bits you need and which bits you need to take out. So if you remember I said that's the bit I want white so I need to keep that bit and then the top part I want white as well so I'm going to keep that. I'm trying to do this fairly quickly so you'll probably make a much better job of it than I do and as I said this is exactly the same technique that we're going to be using to make a stencil for when we do it slightly differently and you can use an embroidery hoop to screen print with. It's 
quite rough and ready today. That's it, so I've got all my bits cut out. Oh, I just need the little collar here. And if I just remove the craft board and put it on this black card, you can get more of an idea of how it's going to look. So if we imagine that the black is our paint, we're going to place that bit like that. That bit on top, but I'll do it a bit better in a minute. And then these bits. They're going to go here. So you can start to see what the image is going to look like. So I get my fabric. You can print onto paper. It doesn't have to be fabric. I quite like using fabric though because it's very forgiving and it doesn't show up all the mistakes. So I've got a piece of newspaper just so I don't make too much of a mess. I lay my fabric down. I lay the stencil on top. So this is the bit where you can get, you know, you sort of start to get quite uh, precious about it because you kind of want it to be a almost perfect print. But I'm just going to try and do it as quickly as I can for you today. But hopefully it will still look like a poppy seed head. You can number these, that's quite a quite an idea, just so that you can make sure you put the right ones back. But as I said, just a very I'm just gonna show you very quickly. Put them there. And then we've just got a top of the stem. Just gonna trim that up a little bit. And then that goes there. Perfect. So now it's time to print. So I've got my screen. This is just a nylon, this uh, specially made for screen printing. This is a nylon uh, fabric that's also um, used for painting onto, uh, printing onto fabric. Again, it's a special type of mesh. You can get varying grades of the mesh. The finer grade is for printing onto paper and the lower grades for printing onto fabric. And it's just a wooden frame with the fabric stretched very, very tightly around it. So I've got fabric paint. And I just put a bit at the bottom. Grab my squeegee. And again, I'm going to stand up for this because it's always easier, I find, to print because you can get your full weight behind it. So this is the squeegee. And this is for printing onto fabric as well, but you can buy them for paper. And what you're looking to do is to print at sort of just off a 45 degree angle. So I'll show you that now. So I'm holding the screen with one hand. I can print with the other. And then I'm going to lift the stencil and the screen and try and find the fabric, hold that down. Yeah. And there's the print. So this one's a lot more stylized than the lino cut, you can see, because we've used paper cutouts. But you can see you get different styles from different types of prints. I always kind of think of each print technique um, as a different language. You know, in some languages, some things are sound a lot better than others. Um, and it's the same with printmaking. Um, some images uh, work better or you just tweak them slightly to make them work 
with the printmaking technique that you're using. So that's the textbook way of doing it. I'm now going to show you how to do it with an embroidery hoop, an old neck curtain um, and an old store card or credit card as your squeegee. So let me just get all my stuff together and we can start printing. Okay, how are you getting on? Okay, so here is the embroidery hoop. I said so this is just a neck curtain. You can use muslin. Um, make sure it's a very fine neck curtain or at least one that doesn't have patterns on it. And I've cut it just slightly larger than the hoop. This is the bottom hoop, the smaller hoop. So I put that, put the fabric over the hoop. Then put the larger hoop on top. and then just tighten it up like you would if you're doing embroidery. Again, this is something that you might already have at home or something that you can buy quite cheaply or from charity shops. And then you just pull that fabric, that neck curtain, nice and tight. I'll just do it here. That's it. So it's just like, like a drum. And that's your basic screen. That's really all that proper screen is. It's just um, mesh over a frame, pulled very tightly. So that's how you make a screen at home very quickly. Um, and you know, you could use different sizes of embroidery hoops as well. Just make sure that the stencil that you cut isn't any larger than the hoop that you're using. And yeah, I think, I, yeah, <laughs> I've just checked my stencil and yeah, it's going to be okay. So now I'm going to show you how to print using this and a credit card. So I've got my stencil already cut. If you've, if you've missed um, the first part, then go back and I'll show you exactly how to cut a paper stencil. But it's basically just using newsprint, plain newsprint again, or newspaper. I've cut the silhouette of the image out. I'm going to lay it onto my fabric with newspaper underneath. Lay it down. And then in here I've got all those tiny bits that I cut out. So I'm going to lay those down as well. That's the collar, that's the top of the seed head. This is where it all gets a bit fiddly. You can use the paper stencils quite a few times. Um, I've done up to 35 times using the same stencil before it starts to break down. But actually it's quite nice when it does start to break down because you can get different effects. And if you, you know, you think screen printing, you think Andy Warhol, and that's how lots of his prints, prints were made, just using the screen again, again and again. Although his wouldn't have been a paper stencil, it would have been something slightly different. Where you actually um, paint onto the screen or so that the stencil is attached to the screen. It's difficult to explain, um, but yeah, as I said, there's lots of different, but it's still a stencil and there's lots of different ways of making stencils. So that's my um, stencil laid down exactly like I did with the textbook screen printing. I take the embroidery hoop, lay it on flat, and I'm just gonna put you down just slightly so you can actually see what I'm doing, just so you can see it's exactly the same technique. I take my paint, I've got my old AA card ready, I put the paint along the bottom, along the top, take the credit card and again you're going to be using it at an angle just off 45 degrees, I'm going to 
that round, then you should be able to see it a bit better actually. And I'm going to stand up again, so I've got all my weight behind it. So press down, hold the screen, it's a bit noisier this one. And I'm just going to go once more over, put paint on me. And I'm going to pick up the stencil and the screen and hopefully hold the fabric down. And there you go. That's how to do a screen print. Just using a roided hoop, a neck curtain and a credit card. So I'll just compare the two. You can see those. You get such an amazing clean print with the with the tweak. So this is the one that we did using the proper screen print and then this is the one that we did using the embroidery hoop and the credit card. And I would say apart from possibly more paint coming through, um, you might not be able to see it from here but I can see that, that the paint is a bit thicker, apart from that I don't really think that there are, are any differences. So hopefully that's inspired you to do some printmaking this weekend. If you do, please send in your photos. I'd love to see them. Please send in your comments and your questions um, and I will try and answer them all um, at the end. So, we've done resist print printmaking, we've done relief printmaking and now I'm going to show you monotype prints. So just two seconds, I'll just bring all of my stuff over and then we can start that one. While I do that, I'll leave you looking at the drinks. Okay, so the print techni technique I'm going to show you now, as I said, is a monotype print and we're going to be using something called a jelly plate. So as you can see, it is like jelly. It's like when you've put too much gelatine in jelly, however it doesn't contain any animal products, it doesn't contain gelatine, but that's the, that's the idea of it. You can actually make your own um, with gelatine, I've never tried myself, but if you look on YouTube there are lots of tutorials to be able to do that. The disadvantage with that is that it takes a very long time to do because you've got all the setting and that sort of stuff involved and also it breaks down very very quickly as well and someone did tell me they made one once and the, they left it in their garage and the mice ate it <laughs> so it's edible it is edible as well especially to, to small rodents and um, the way I'm going to show you to, to do it differently is using just a piece of cardboard and some cling film which you probably have at home anyway. But I'm going to start by showing you the textbook technique. So here is our jelly plate and again I'm just going to pop you down, I hope you're not getting motion sickness, I'm going to pop you down, ink it up and then I'll show you how we can make um, prints. So there is our jelly plate and I'm going to be using just these match pots, match pot paints. You can use acrylic paint, you can use gouache. Uh, I really like these match pot paints because often they're on offer so they're really really cheap. Um, they come in some great colours and also some great names. I think this one's called Scrumptious, um, I've got one called Dance Fever, I've got Khaki Dream, they're just yeah such amazing um, names. So these, this is what I'm going to be using today. Any water-based paint on jelly, jelly plates you can use. And you don't need to stick with one colour, you can ink up a couple of colours. And one thing to remember is that you don't need too much. You can always put on more if you need to. And I'm just going to use a roller, same roller that we used in the lino cut actually. Use the roller to spread that ink 
all over, blend the colours in. And you, if you're finding that one of the colours is taking over too much, you just get a piece of newspaper, just take some of that off your roller and then you can go in again. So that's my jelly plate all linked up. There's lots of different elements that you can use to create prints. I really like the natural prints. So I'm, although I'm not doing a poppy seed head this time, it wouldn't quite work on here. I'm going to carry on the theme of natural elements. So I've just got some feathers. They work really well if you rough them up. Because you get more texture and a lot more interest. Um, I'm also just going to go in with a, a little piece of bubble wrap. You get some really great textures from these. And I'm just going to lay it on and take it off. So you've got the contrast between the industrial kind of bubble wrap and also the natural feathers. So I'm just going to keep it very, very simple. Now I just need some paper. Again, just cartridge paper, um, the thicker stuff rather than the really thin stuff. And I've actually already just created a background, so just with some yellow and green paint. I think this one was Mustard Jar and this one's Khaki Dream. And I'm going to put it on top. I'm going to stand up again because I always find that easier. And just using the palm of my hands and my fingers. I'm going to go over all of those feathers making sure that you make contact with the plate, the paper and the feathers and then if you can see I'm going to pull that just before I pull off the paper entirely I'm just going to pick the feathers up and then go in again rubbing over where the feathers have just come from and then put that crop into the light you can see I think that's better you can see the background has come through on the feathers it's mixed and mingled with all of the pinks and the blues and the greens and it's also created some really photographic type prints. So that's just one way to make a jelly print. There are lots of other ways that you can use it. You can use it for stencils, so many different ways. But what I'm gonna show you now is to how, how to create something very, very similar using cardboard and cling film. So I'll just bring those over. I'm gonna use the same elements again so that you can see how the two uh, compare. I've got my piece of cardboard, quite thick. I've got my cling film. This is where I always get into trouble because you know what happens with cling film. It all ends up rolling in on itself. So I just go around the cling, go around the cardboard with the cling film just a couple of times. Try and use that plastic bit to take it off. That's it. And then wrap it round so that it's nice and tight all the way round. And that's going to be your printing plate. Again, I'm going to put it down again so you can see how I do the next bit. So using the same inks or the same paints, these water-based colour match ones, I'm going to oh, need a new one. I'm going to use a similar pattern. So for this bit, I'm going to use the roller again, the printing roller. But you can use one of those rollers that you get in the mini, in sort of the decorating kits. The you know, there's always a couple of mini rollers, aren't there? 
that you can get and I think you can buy those again very cheaply or you might even have rollers you could use a large one if you wanted um, but I think the the bigger ones would uh, the smaller ones would be best so I like using the cling film because you get quite a lot of texture from it you can probably see already how that's um, bubbled up so I'm just going to pull it slightly taut again I'm going to pop my leaves on Take my piece of paper, this is again with the, the colours Mustard Jar and Khaki Dream. Place that down like we did with the jelly plate and using fingers and palms. Rub over the back of the paper so you're making contact, contact with the plate, the paint and the feathers. lift that up and then I'm just going to take a couple of those feathers away so you, you're going to be able to see a contrast rub over where those feathers were move my board so you can see the print And there's a jelly print done using cling film and cardboard. I'll just get the other one so you can sort of see the difference. Although the actual jelly print gives you does give you more of a, a solid print. I think you get some really great textures and you get some really lovely colour blends as well with the cling film and cardboard. Cool, so that's been quite a whistle-stop tour of three different printmaking techniques done different ways how you can tweak them. If you do um, do any of the printmaking techniques this weekend, it would be lovely to see your photos. You can either comment um, in the comments, post your photos in the comments um, down below this video, or you can also contact me at I Printed That. So I'm on Facebook and Instagram at I Printed That. So thank you so much for watching. Um, I'll go through all the comments, make sure I um, so I can answer any questions that you've got. And have a lovely weekend, have a very creative weekend and I hope to see you soon. Bye for now.